Okay. Um, hi, everybody. It's one o'clock on Monday, and it's our uh, weekly get together for a uh, discussion of uh, Pierre Cabot and all kinds of stuff that uh, plays off of it. I hope that you had a, uh, I hope you had a wonderful Purim. Now we're going into high gear for Pesach, uh, and uh, we'll have what to say about that as we get closer to the uh, to the holiday. We were talking last time. We started discussing. Um, a Mishnah that pops up twice, or the rather a saying that pops up twice in the first chapter of uh, Pirkei Avot, and a say l'charav, that a person should get themselves a teacher. And last time we talked about different possibilities why this um, admonition uh, arises twice. Why is it, I wanted to adjust this because it's a little bit... Um, why it pops up twice? Why repeat it? In general, um, we talked about the fact that um, Judaism Hebrew is a um, language which is a religion or a culture that very much respects language. And uh, the result of that is that we try to be very careful in what we say and how often we say it. And that's something which we learn from the Torah, where the Torah goes out of its way to be uh, careful and um, judicious about uh, the number of words that it uses. So why come up with a say l'charav twice? So we went through a few of the different possibilities. What I want to do uh, today is continue that discussion, and I want to discuss two aspects, one positive and one not so positive, uh, of the aspect of having a teacher. Now, part of having a teacher, uh, something that, by the way, we um, are in danger of losing today, because we think that we can just, uh, you know, Google anything. This is we make, we, people make jokes about Rabbi Google and Dr. Google and Professor Google. But the amount of information, uh, even without going into fake news, uh, the amount of information that's on the, in the Internet doesn't automatically make you an expert. The amount of information on the Internet doesn't make you a... Um, uh, doesn't make you a... What should we say? A, uh, uh, an expert. Uh, it doesn't make you an authority. And I see that I have to actually move my the phone. So please give me a second. This is going to look not nice, but I've got to supposed to do this apparently because it looks like it's upside down. So please excuse me for the lack of aesthetics. And I will, please, sorry about that. I will get this down eventually. <laughs> How to do this. All right, hold on a second. There we go. Okay, hope that's better. Um, in any event, we that doesn't make you an expert. That doesn't make you a, um, doesn't give you a right to an opinion. Because at the end of the day, raw data uh, is something that you um, need to know how to use. And that's what a teacher does. A teacher teaches you how to put things together. A teacher teaches you how to evaluate. Uh, no matter what is written, no matter what there is on, uh, on the Internet, it doesn't matter. The, um, there's always thing, there are always things between the lines that the, um, that the teacher can give you. And um, and that's and that's something you can't just get you can't get from reading. Um, there's a famous uh, Israeli uh, group that um, band which uh, it's interesting. They haven't been together in many 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 years. Uh, they were called Kaveret, uh, but they were really the pi among the pioneers of uh, of Israeli rock. And um, uh, everybody uh, generations and front generations know all their songs. Now, one of their songs is um, is uh, Yoya, and one of the lines in Yoya was that uh, he had a fr that the, um, the person who's narrating the song had a, uh, a fr I think it was a friend or a cousin who learned uh, who learned um, how to who learned who learned how to swim by correspondence, and he had all of the he knew all of the strokes, everything was all down until he uh, until he went into the water and started to drown. 
the same thing you can drown in the information what the what the teacher comes to do is to teach you first of all how to use the information how do we how to judiciously apply the information gives you material and insights and things that were oral that you wouldn't have gotten from the uh from things that are written but more than that it develop the the function of a, of a teacher is to teach you sensitivity to the broader issues that the information you have and that's true of everything it's certainly true of torah because the teaching of Torah is not just, and I've said this a thousand times, the teaching of Torah is not the teaching of text. The teaching of Torah is not the teaching of, of, of just passing on information. It's being part of a living, pulsating tradition. It t- means every one of us takes a responsibility to passing on what we received to the next generation. But to be able to do that, we have to receive from those who had it. And as opposed to... Um, as opposed to... You know more more modern positions where the good with the, the the new is always by definition better than the good I mean, I'm sorry, the new is always better than the old um we at we don't we don't we don't paralyze ourselves in in the past but but we we're very but we are very very respectful of the past because the people that we um the people that we study from uh, had the opportunity and had the privilege of um knowing and meeting um great figures of the past and, and they make and they make us um and they make us uh an integral part of a uh, of a living chain which is both a privilege and a responsibility that's the task of the rav a selecha rav in this regard means don't just get information from some guy but attach yourself to be a disciple a disciple means being a person who um being the person who, who develops a closeness uh, with a with a master, um, who can help to met, where who can help to see have insights into your personal needs in terms of how exactly you're going to find your way around Torah. A person, who, as I said the last week, who's accessible, um, who's able to uh, truly, truly, um, excuse me, um, truly, truly uh delve into delve into things you know it's funny when um there's in the 16th century there was a very famous rabbi whose name was Rabbi Shlomo Luria and uh, he was the first cousin of Rabbi Moshe Israelis who wrote the famous commentary Ashkenazi commentary on the Shulchan Aruch and um in his introduction to his book the Yamshel Shlomo he says that at Sinai it's, a, it's an amazingly daring statement he says that at Sinai, um, every single Jew heard a different Torah. There were six hundred thousand males, or six hundred you know, groups of males, whatever the elef, whatever elef means, and everybody heard something different. Now, that doesn't mean that there's anarchy, but it means that every single person has their own unique relationship to the Torah, and within within reason, everybody's approach is is valid. So, what the teacher is supposed to do is to allow you to develop your own personality. We saw this, um, I, I mentioned this in passing in the first mission already, when it says, when the, when, the, when, the, um, when the members of the Knesset Hagdola said that you should raise up many students, so Rav Soloveitchik, he's not the only one who said this, said, pointed out that it's not just a question of, it doesn't say teach many students. It doesn't say just. It doesn't say pass on information. It says ha'amidu. Let them stand on their own two feet. In other words, instill in them not only a sense and a reverence for the past, and a realization of their own limitations, but by the same token, also the ability to be able to stand on their own two feet and to be able to make a contribution. Because every single generation has to make a contribution to the uh, to the chain of tradition, or else, um, or else the results are not going to be good. Let's 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 leave it at that. Um, now, the I met now the, that the, how do you develop that reverence for uh, for tradition? Now, sometimes it's the charisma of an individual. We're going to talk about the dangers of charisma because it, it, charisma is a very dangerous can be a very dangerous uh, a very dangerous thing. But the root of the reverence that the Torah has or Judaism has for tradition. The, the 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 sometimes the sense of who am I what, what you know who am I to come close to these to the great figures of the past is rooted in the fundamental in the fundamental and central um, moment experience of Torah study what is that well um, that can be um, 
easily conveyed in one verse. Uh, in the uh, 19th chapter of the book of Exodus, which we read a few weeks ago, and which we will please God read again in Shavuos, in Shavuot time, sorry, um, the Torah says, Bachodesh HaShlishi letzeit b'nei Yisrael me'eretz Mitzrayim b'yom hazeh ba'u midbar Sinai. That in the third month of the going out from the going out of Egypt on that on this day, by Yom Hazeh on this day the Jews the children of Israel came to the wilderness of Sinai and then the Torah was given. Rashi points out that it should have not the, the pasuk should the verse should not have said by Yom Hazeh Ba'umid Bar Sinai on this day they came into uh, into the wilderness of Sinai. And what they should have said was by Yom Hahu on that day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. So why why this day? So Rashi says. In order to teach us that bechol yom vayom yud devrei Torah chadashim alecha ki ilu hayom nitnu, that the Torah insights, that the words of Torah should be new for you and fresh for you, as if they were given today. Now, there's a that, that's a very very pregnant uh, and very uh, repercussive um, uh, statement. I would like to zoom in only on one part of it, and that is that the uh, that the implication here is that the act of Torah study. The act of Torah study is an act of revelation. It's not just, I mentioned this before, it's not just an act of worship, it's an act of revelation. In other words, when you open, it doesn't matter what book you open, whether it's a Chumash, whether it's a Navi, whether it's philosophy, or whether it's a Gemara, whether it's a Nash, it doesn't matter. You are engaging in an act of revelation. You are, you are one is supposed to experience an act of revelation because God is revealing directly or indirectly with kind of Chumash or Gemara or whatever the case might be um, his wisdom to you so that's a very very um, humbling and very very moving moment but it, it but that but that awareness of the fact that you are being revealed that God is will is being revealed to you through whatever um, Whatever text you're studying, whichever whatever book you're where you're learning, um, is the grund norm. It's the it provides the ground norm of the experience of Torah study. We are attached to Sinai. We hook in to Sinai. It's not something that happened then. It's something which is happening now. The Talmud in Tractate Brachot says that um, that God tells Moses that he should instruct the children of Israel, instruct us. That, that that we should always remember the theophany at Sinai. We should always keep in mind the um, the moment that we stood at Sinai when God revealed His law to us, or the beginning of the Torah, which then uh, which then was expanded by us based on the rules that were uh, were given to us. What does that mean? That means that every single moment of Torah study is 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 a permanent moment in which which is supposed to envelop us. Now, what's that got to do with teachers? It's very simple. Um, we didn't, um, we weren't, we weren't there. We'll be, we can be there in our imaginations, but generation upon a generation of teacher and disciple, um, links us to that major and that formative, for that formative moment. So yes, when we open a safer on our own, we are experienced revelation at the same time, um, when we teach, we study with a teacher, who received from somebody who was a who who was uh, uh, who was a great teacher, and on and on and on. But ultimately, back to Sinai. Uh, there's an interesting story that is told that I heard uh, Dr. Tova Lichtenstein, the daughter of Soloveitchik, um, that I think puts this into um, uh, puts this into uh, something of a perspective. She said that her father was always very um, affected by the fact that he saw somebody who saw somebody who had seen somebody as a young man who had seen the go of Vilna. Now, he tell you, you, so by, you know, it's, he didn't doubt he didn't see the go of Vilna, but, but this person, this person, this person, this direct connection. And that's what the teacher provides. The teacher's supposed to provide not just information, but uh, not, and not just method of study, and not, not, not just uh, teach us uh, our own, um, our own uh, sense of humility, but also is supposed to instill us in us the um, atmosphere and the liver and the and the inspiration that goes with Torah study, because it's not just like studying any other any other discipline, 
it's an act of uh, it's an act of worship and an act of revelation um, this uh, relates and that means that the requirement of the Rav, I mean, the Rav has got to learn to know how to teach because he's going to invoke people. He's going to invoke people and ideas and make them alive because we don't believe in the path being dead. We don't believe, um, uh, you know, so-and-so lived 500 years ago, he's not relevant. The, the, there is no, in a, in a real sense, there is no Jewish past there's always an eternal present. Notice in the Mishnah, so and so Omer, two thousand years ago, he says. What do you mean he says? He's been dead. No, he's still living. In fact, and I'll put the uh, what I will do is I will put the clip um, in the uh, comments for this video. Um, the um, I put the clip for this video. The um, the um, the, the, the Rav Soloveitchik has a famous comment in which he says, "What I teach, he says, all the generations come together. People will live in this century, in that century, and everybody's discussing, and it's alive, and it's it's you're talking about people who 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 are living presences." The, 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 in nineteen uh, in nineteen thirty five, uh, Harvard had a uh, had a famous uh, had a conference on the occasion of the 800th anniversary of the birth of Maimonides, and they asked Rav Soloveitchik to give a paper. Um, at the time, uh, he just a fresh he was a freshly minted PhD from the University of Berlin, and um, sort of as an off statement, he said he said uh, something of the something to the to the effect that he was absolutely shocked to hear that the Maimonides had died. He didn't know because as far as he was concerned, the Rambam was a living presence, and that's. And that's something which which the Rav is supposed to pass on to you. Also, this sense of um, the full texture and eternal presence of all the great figures in uh, in Jewish uh, in Jewish history and in, in in Torah learning. So, to repeat, when we're talking about Asel Rav, the Rav is supposed to be the person who will uh, teach you to read between the lines, teach you to evaluate the material that you would to, uh, the material that you you learn. Um, teach you to be able to, dis to discern between right and wrong. Teach you humility because, by definition, the student knows more, knows less. The teacher knows less than the than the than the, than the, um, than the, the disciple. And the truth of the matter is, humility, especially intellectual humility, is um, sorely missed in our uh, in our uh, in our age. In fact, if I would say any, if there were any uh, moral quality which uh, is totally absent in the age of uh, in the age of um, uh, what's it called in the age of Corona? It's uh, it's humility, um, and also the the, um, the teachers by his piety and by his presentation is supposed to um, teach us to develop ourselves, and the same token tie us emotionally, experientially, and intellectually to all the generations that went before, because we all carry a very very heavy, not burden, but a responsibility. And a very and a very and which which actually vivifies us as well, of um, of three thousand years or three five hundred years of uh, of Jewish tradition. So that's ase lecha rav, that's the one. And ase lecha rav. Develop. Don't be afraid of the teacher. Never, 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 never. My I was afraid. I was terrified of my teacher. I tell you the truth. I mean, you know, we we were terrified of Rub Soloveitchik, and we were I was we were ter terrified of Professor Tversky at Harvard. We were ter I mean, these people were like, you know, oh. Uh. But the truth of the matter is, if you made the effort, it was worth it to get to know them and to have them help you develop yourself. I say lecha rav, because at the end of the day, the impact of your teacher on you is incredibly profound. Because the teacher helps to form you. It doesn't matter how old you are. It's got nothing to do with age. Okay? Yeah, well, later on we'll see a really Shabbat Nevoya's cynical comment about old pe older people studying, younger people studying. But let's put him aside for a minute. Um, teachers are formative. Now you have all kinds of paid teachers. You, do, you, go to the, you go to people that you, uh, that you think are going to can help you grow in the ways that you, um, that you think are most appropriate. Uh, most people have a Rav Muvhak, a teacher to whom you go... Uh, or who you see as your major instructor, because you have to have some kind of consistency, and that'll have, to, and that will, in fact, uh, impact on the next part of the Mishnah, which we're going to talk about next week. It's a heavy-duty business. The Mishnah says, "Histalek ma'at If you have a teacher, you'll get away from doubt. 
So I want to talk about doubt as a religious category. Is doubt a good thing? Is doubt a bad thing? Um, we have this idea that um, that doubt is a bad thing and we should uh, never doubt and we should have pure faith. And then people say, can't have pure faith, then it can't be religious. No, no, none of that's true. But that's for next time. Okay, so that's broadly when we talk about a Sela Harav. I mentioned in passing, and that's what I want to do in the last 10 minutes. I wish we did this for an hour. It'd make, make life a lot easier. Um, the Having a teacher means letting down your guard. And that's especially true today because, you know, I, I don't want to get, I don't want to sound like some kind of a, you know, a, Magazine and the I don't know if they still do they still have magazines they used to have magazines when you would you know like check out of the supermarket. Um, we all to a certain degree have an intimacy problem. We don't like to let our guard down for understandable reasons. We don't nobody wants to get hurt. Um, and I mean it's too bad because on, on a certain degree we should open ourselves up because otherwise you can't grow. If you just batten down to the the hatches you'll never you'll never grow either. But. Um, Having a teacher means trusting. Having a teacher means letting your guard down. Having a teacher means um, having a relationship. And a relation, your relationships can be of all different sorts. Um, but And that's necessary. However, that can lead to, usually, thank God, I think that that's... You know, when you when you when you take that responsibility, that's um, you know you don't get hurt as a result. Or if there's a if there's any storm and drawing involved, it's not going to be you know overly painful. But sometimes uh, you choose the wrong the, the wrong rav, and you have the wrong teacher, or you're caught up in the wrong person, or you're betrayed. It happens. Unfortunately, it happens. Um, and this is especially true in terms of people that are charismatic. Uh, there are people who are, there are many, many people who are charismatic, who are wonderful people, and their charisma is channeled and controlled and uh, guarded by their values, by their, uh, by their good inclination. Uh, they're aware of the fact that the people follow them and they don't let it go to their head. They, they realize that they're of their own limitations and therefore don't, um, don't, uh, don't abuse uh, whatever uh, charm or whatever they might have. Yeah, on the other hand, it is a fact that there are teachers who, in fact, um, uh, don't do that and can't do that. Well, whether they don't do that or can't do that is irrelevant because when we're talking, what we're talking about here is what happens when you discover that a um, that a person that you admired um, is, um, is a predator, um, is a hypocrite. That can be crushing. One can chuck the whole Torah as a result. The Chil Hashem, the desecration of God's name, which can be wrought by one person who gets seduced by the dark side, is, is incalculable. And therefore, even as we revere our teachers and love our teachers, um, you can't be um, absolutely... Um, you have to be. You have to always be aware of yourself and not lose yourself in their personality. You always have to be aware of what they take. You know, be able to be ready to take a few steps back. Um, in the over the past ten years or so, more twenty years, uh, there have been a number of really terrible situations in the in the Orthodox community. Now, it's not just a matter of the Orthodox community, but but I don't believe in what aboutism. Oh, over there they have this, and over there they that. In fact, there's a word in Hebrew. Um, um, Amos Oz's daughter Fanya, who I have a Twitter, a Twitter, a Twitter have a frequent, fairly frequent Twitter exchange with, um, taught me a new word, and that is gamagogia. Gam means also gamagogia. They sort of gam and demagogia. You use you say what about that? What about that? That's what aboutism. And it doesn't matter. I don't care what other people are worrying about. It's like I don't care about you know this group is violating the th- when one group violates the the rules in terms of Corona. So well, what about them? That's not my problem. My problem is I have to do the right thing. So in our community, in the Orthodox community, there were serious problems, both in Israel and the United States, of charismatic rabbis who violated um, violated the sacred bond between student and uh, and and teacher. So what 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 happens in that situation? 
So, um, it, this is a lot. This is the subject for a longer, much longer discussion. But I would just like to share with you a few lines of a uh, of a story in the Talmud in Tractate Moed Kotten. Tractate Moed Kotten deals with actually, among other things, the laws of mourning, but also the laws of um, um, good excommunication. Um, have the following. Uh, have the following. Uh, have the following story. A second, I have to turn this over. Okay. Hahu Tsurme bin Rabbanan. There was a scholar, Dehavusano Shumane, concerning whom there was a persistent, there were persistent rumors or persistent reports of the fact that he was uh, misbehaving. Amma Rav Yehuda. So Rav Yehuda was the second judge. Second generation Amora in Babylonia, that we're talking about the that's the third century CE. Hechi Leavid, what are we going to do with this guy? Lishamte, if we if we excommunicate him, if we drum him out of the core, if we no longer uh, if we no longer see him as part of a as a legitimate teacher, Tsrihi Le Rabbanon. Uh, he's a wonderful teacher. He knows a tremendous amount. People love reading him. They love watching his television shows. They love look at, uh, whatever. P- they, it's not just the average person. He's a great scholar. Trichile Rabbanon. The other rabbis need them. They need him too. The other scholars need him too. Lo lishamte. If we don't do that, mitchal shmadishmaya. If we cover for him. If we don't admit that the person was 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 guilty of malfeasance, then we will um, then we will build, then we will uh, end up desecrating God's name, and that is the worst sin impossible. Maimonides says the only sin for which you have to, the only sin for which the only possible um, uh, penance or atonement is death in other words you only you don't you only get you, you only get forgiven by god totally when you die is chil shem shemayim is is desecrating god's name because it's not just a matter of god's name god himself might have been willing to be um might have been willing to be compassionate but when you desecrate god's name you make the whole torah look bad you endanger the 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 the, the jewishness of everybody else you end up making the rest of the world hatred hate, hate hate the torah so he says, so what? So we're on the horns of a dilemma. If we if we if we uh, excommunicate him, then 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 we won't be able to learn from him anymore. And if we don't excommunicate him, it's going to be a terrible chilul Hashem. So what do we do? Amalei l'Rabba Barbarchana. So we asked his colleague, Rabba Barbarchana, Midi Shmilach Baha. Have you ever encountered or heard a tradition or some kind of teaching something, which relate which 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 uh, explains it? How do we go about this dilemma? Amalei, yes, I did. When I was visiting in Eretz Yisrael, I, I heard Rabbi Yochanan, who was the earlier generation, the first generation of Amoraim, there was the, gener- the teachers after the uh, Mishnah. I heard Rabbi Yochanan say the following: My dichtiv, when the when the uh, when the prophet says in the prophet Malachi in the second chapter, ki siftei kutkohen yishmeru daat b'torah yevakshu mipihu ki malach Hashem tzvaod. For the uh, slips of the Kohen will guard, uh, will guard or preserve knowledge. pihu, and people will teach, uh, will will um, uh, will seek uh, instruction from him. Ki malach Hashem tzvakot, as just as if he were an angel of uh, of the Lord of Hosts. The Kohen here in the in the in the ancient period, the function of the Kohenim was um, was fundamentally teaching because the amount of time that they spent in Beit Hamikdash was minimal, like two weeks a month, two, two weeks a year. Most of the time was involved in teaching and in Paschani Shalos. They were the rabbis, if you want. So therefore, by extension, we're talking about what is a rabbi supposed to be. Ha, so so the so the verse says that the the priest or the rabbi uh, preserves knowledge and people teach him as if he were an angel of God, said Rabbi Yochanan. Apparently, im domeh malach Hashem, if the rabbi is like an angel, yevakshu Torah mipihu, if he's above reproach, if he's a person of impeccable. Uh, of impeccable uh, moral and ethical character, realizing they make mistakes, but we're talking about a person who tries to embody the highest, um, the highest uh, standards of ethical behavior. Torah 
such a person, you can certainly feel no problem about about um, uh, about uh, seeking Torah, seeking instruction from him. Vim love, and if he's not, if he's a person of moral, uh, he's a person whose morality and whose ethics have been impugned. Al yevakshu Torah mipiv. Then don't, under any circumstances, study with him. In other words, even though this person might possess tremendous wisdom and traditions, his peccadillos, his moral flaws impugn his um, impugn his uh, his teachings. Raises interesting questions because in recent years, for example, one of the people who who was uh, clearly clearly guilty of um, of moral problem of moral uh, misbehavior is a person whose books were widespread and there was a big question do you take the books out of the baby brush can you study them anymore or not would you you know do you do you divide between the time that he he was discovered or outed and for but what do you what what do you do what people did was different things unfortunately a lot of too many people covered for him also but the point is that the more that you have to be careful because people who are charismatic may be full of knowledge, but that knowledge is undermined and impugned and defiled by their ethical failings. So when you say Rav, the question is, who do you make your Rav? What do you seek from them? Who don't you make your Rav? And you always hold them to a higher standard. Stand, you always hold them to a high standard. And the answer to that question is a definite yes. Okay, and with that, we finish um, today's shear. Um, if you haven't gotten your vaccines, go get, vaccine, go get vaccinated, go get vaccinated, go get vaccinated. Our pace up depends on it. Next week, we'll deal with something a little bit uh, touchy, the question of doubt as a legitimate religious category. What does it mean, his talekma, for the fake, run away from, run away from doubt? Uh, not so clear what that what that means. And I know we all live, live, deal with doubt. And um, the commentaries on here, Pirkei Avot, and we'll see others, um, and other connections, raise this issue, this question of doubt in halacha, doubt in emunah, doubt in faith, um, doubt in terms of when we confront, uh, we confront evil or loss. Out in the face of um, of a pandemic, all of these things have to be confronted, because if we don't confront them, we don't have, if we confront the questions. The questions will be there, and they'll eat at us, and that is not the way to go. If anything, we believe in directly confronting, and even if we don't have an answer, um, uh, as Reb Chaim Brisker used to say, "Mashtapne d'shma kasha." We don't you don't die from a question. Okay, we'll see you soon. I'm going to put this up on. Uh, this will be up on. Uh, uh, on my YouTube channel, this will be up on uh, obviously on the uh, Tel Aviv International Synagogue uh, site. Um, it'll be uh, I'll keep it on my uh, on my uh, story uh, all week long. And um, please share, give me ask me ask questions, share the share if you think it was good. The more uh, the more pe- the more people that get into this conversation. I'm not looking for likes, but the more people that get in the conversation, the better. Um, more the more insights and barova madra smalach as they say the more people let's learn Torah together the more the greater glory to god and we will see you next time bye